1045, the team, you're home for New York sports. We're joined on the phone by the Sporting News with Vinny Iyer. Vinny, let's, uh, let's talk a little fantasy football, my friend. Is there is there a player you're seeing drafted really high that you just think should be avoided at all costs? Well, I am a guy that's going to wait on quarterbacks, and I see quarterbacks going way high that I, I don't see as much separation as people look in, lock into Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and all that, but I think this year there's a, a ton of sleepers in the middle. Even uh, Drew Brees is being undervalued here. He suddenly dropped off with one season where he didn't throw 30 touchdown passes, but still played pretty well and uh, put up numbers in a lot of other areas. So, areas. so to me, the quarterbacks just in general get keep getting drafted higher and higher each year. And there's some myth that some of these guys, uh, Tom Brady, Russ Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, are better than the rest when. There's not much separation in the point value, and you're giving up a shot at a really special running back or wide receiver early. Well, speaking of waiting on players, running back for the Buffalo Bills, LaShawn McCoy, and everything that's happened off the field this offseason with him for fantasy football players, what would you do with a guy like LaShawn McCoy? It's, it's very difficult because there's no way to protect yourself and say, okay, I'm just plugging Chris Ivory, and I'm good. You have to think about it a little bit more uh, what's going to be your plan because then you probably have to draft another viable kind of timeshare back from another team just in case you don't have a guy in week one or a guy, regardless of everything that's been going on off the field and whatever, however that turns out, he's older, the mileage is there. We know running backs, especially of his ilk, that have kind of gone beyond what they're supposed to be producing at their age. It's going to be coming down here pretty soon. So you got to factor all that in. There's no true handcuff there. He's a guy that I would say avoid early in the drafts, but you see him, uh, I look at his value every day. It's going down, down, down. So third or fourth round pick at best with uh, LaShawn McCoy. And I think that number could uh, continue to dwindle here as uh, some young guys keep rising up. Vinny, we're the home for the New York Jets here in the Capital Region. Is there any player, even on the New York Jets roster, who has any fantasy value in 2018? <laughs> well, you don't totally want to shut down any person having value. You saw what Robbie Anderson did last year. He scored game after game for a lot of teams out of nowhere to help teams. We have to see what happens to Robbie Anderson. He could be facing something there off the field, connecting with a new quarterback potentially there, other if Dan Darnold in there, or long shot of Teddy Bridgewater in there. It could be a new quarterback dealing with that. He has such good chemistry with Josh McCown. But I'd say maybe if you're looking for some share, you might look at Bilal Powell because Isaiah Crowell, not necessarily the most uh, durable guy that we can trust. Elijah McGuire's already uh, hurt himself there. So Powell, kind of a guy who can do a little bit of everything, especially in the PPR league. He's going to be the receiving back there and the. Uh, do all the little things there, with the, especially if uh, Sam Darnold is in there as a rookie quarterback. This morning, this is Vinny Iyer with us right now on 104.5 The Team. Vinny, when you look at the other New York team, the New York Giants, we're heading to their camp tomorrow. Is Saquon Barkley definitely the top guy you take on that team, or, or would you possibly reach for OBJ a little sooner? Well, I think OBJ kind of scares a little uh, few people because of uh, just not seeing him out there totally doing his – Thing we, we've seen him in doses, but when it's uh, the real deal and uh, going out there and running the way he used to, we still need to see that. But Barkley's still the guy that as you look at. I think it's going to be a pretty running back heavy first uh, round there, probably with uh, in some order Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Ezekiel, uh, David Johnson. Now the question is, does Barkley come in next, or is it Melvin Gordon, or Cream Hunt, or Leonard Fournette, or Alvin Kamara? So I think you can look at any of those guys there in that range. I don't think it would be crazy or wrong to take Barkley. I personally like him after Kamara in about that sixth spot overall. We've been taking some questions on our social media outlets, facebook.com slash 104 the team and at 104 the team on Twitter. Nicholas writes this one, and Nicholas wants to know, Vinny, is Jimmy Garoppolo actually going to kill it this year like I feel like he's going to? Well, you look at it every time out. He just has a sense about him and uh, – I think you can throw a whole bunch of comparisons out there to him. There's a bit of Romo in him, uh, not just because he went to the same school, but he moves around, throws the ball downfield pretty confidently, except I don't think he's going to make the same types of mistakes. So you look at Marquise Goodwin and him seem to have a sixth sense there, and 
really a number one receiver quarterback combination. Gar- Pierre Garçon is going to give them something. Trent Taylor, George Kittle, the tight end, the two backs there, Jarek McKinnon and Matt Breida. So you saw a lot of 300-yard games from Jimmy Garoppolo out of the gate last year. I think the touchdowns are going to come this year as well. So I think right now he's like the 12th to 15th quarterback, somewhere there. because People are a little skeptical. I think you could drop the skepticism now and feel a lot more confident you're going to steal. Vinny Iyer with us right now from the Sporting News on 104.5 The Team. So, Vinny, is there a sleeper, is there a player nobody's talking about that you absolutely have to have on your roster? Well, I, I think Goodwin is probably one of them that uh, a lot of people are starting to target now, realizing he's the man there. But I'm always looking for upside, upside, upside. So Chris Godwin is another guy in that uh, range in Tampa Bay. It looks like he's going to have a big, big role there. I think at tight end, there's a whole bunch of guys that you can look at that have some nice upside late. And the rule with tight end is the same as quarterback. You don't get one of those top ones early, wait until late. And you look at the Benjamin Watson a couple of years ago, very good in that Saints offense scoring touchdowns. They're going to need someone doing that early with Mark Ingram out. You saw the Jaguars open up the passing game, work to the tight ends a little bit. Austin Spray and Jenkins, you look at it. And Eric Ebron at in Indianapolis now, looking more like the number three option in a two tight end set. They're, the Colts and Frank Reich really want to use Ebron all over the field. So a guy that disappointed in Detroit, but gives you some really great depth and value at tight end. But you can wait very late and probably get a viable option there. In the leagues you play in, whether it be the Sporting News or others, is there a great punishment for somebody who finishes in last place? Well, being left out of the money wasn't bad enough. I think there are different things that uh, can really humiliate you. We've, I've used a trophy before, just a really crappy, broken down, <laughs> eat up trophy that you get for being uh, in last place. But usually just shame, humiliation, and uh, we also give the winner a hard time too the following year as well. So they get ripped in a little bit as well. So it, there's just no easy feeling for a first or last place in our league. Vinny, is there like is there a name that, that jumps out to you? Like I always I always look back to I was in one league that had like Henny Given Sunday. What would M J D do? Stuff like that. Is there ever a name that, that it was so good that it sticks with you all time? Yeah. I I think uh there's one name and it it is related to uh the athleticism of player and one time we just said he looked like a dying new and it was just the dying news. <laughs> and, it, and it was not anything very uh, standout punny with a team name, but just the way it was. You just stared at this team, and you tried to picture that mascot, a dying new. Where would you get a new, and where would you have him dying, and why would you want that to be your mascot if he's not very athletic? So all kinds of uh, fun can be had. And I think you go creative outside the box. Uh, use those puns as well as you can. I, I think... Jimmy Garoppolo puns uh, are going to be the rage uh, this year, I-, I think, in fantasy football. Yeah, no one was more bummed than me last year when uh, when Deshaun Kaiser didn't get it done because I had the Deshaun Kaiser Soses, but it just didn't it didn't add up because he wasn't that good. Yeah, that, that's the key. The guy has to be pretty good. I, I like one of my team names that I've been doing for several years called the Curb Enthusiast. It's it's kind of good, that, uh, even though that. Uh, Show has been in and out of relevance. It works out, and kind of uh, my attitude sometimes towards fantasy football. <laughs> I can't be a curmudgeon there at times. Man, we appreciate your time as always, Vinny Iyer, the Sporting News, and you can uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Iyer, and of course, uh, Sporting News put together a bunch of their experts all in one for their 2018 NFL preview. Uh, always great stuff to read, and Vinny, we appreciate your time like always. All right, thank you.